SELFSI, Spoken Easy Language for Social Inclusion. It's interesting because uh, all the talks today were mostly um, talking about the two-way communication. So two-way communication happens where, when there are two people together uh, talking to each other and um, as a broadcasters, as a representative of broadcasters, um, we are producing per definition one-way uh, messages, one-way emissions, one-way one -way shows, which means that um, they cannot be um, repaired on the spot, they cannot be uh, discussed, and they are not as, let's say, uh, spontaneous as the two-way communication can be. So in this sense, um, when I was listening now to uh, Lea Laura's uh, wonderful talk, um, one-way communication is in sense a bit more, um, how to say, rigid, um, but paradoxically, because it wants to be understandable more universally. Uh, so I think we have a bit more problems with, uh, with one-way communication. Uh, but in my talk today, I will try um, to present a few examples at the beginning of what is being done in European public broadcasting in this sense. And at the end, I will also um, talk a bit about the questioner, about the producers, the oral content producers. Uh, there are not... Uh, a lot of them, it's just a few of them were, were uh, responding to the questioner, but this is uh, how the situation actually is in Europe. Um, so to start uh, in this great book, Handbook of Easy Language in Europe, um, there are, it, it says that there are a few countries that offer news articles in different media formats across Europe. Um, for those who don't, who, who cannot see on the presentation, these countries are Austria, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Latvia, the Netherlands, Norway, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. Um, they come from the public service, the commercial media, or self-advocacy organizations. Um, many of these countries produce mainly news in written easy language, mostly online, um, but some of them, and those are of interest to me, uh, produce also audio and audiovisual um, content. So the first one, which I guess... Um, is really important, especially for us who are looking around Europe to find um, examples of how spoken easy language is used, is ULE. Um, so news in easy Finnish from the Finnish national broadcaster, who I think last year um, celebrated 30 years of producing content in easy finish which is quite quite an achievement um i have thank you i have uh, links here but um there are a few how to say uh, at ule at finnish national broadcaster they are producing both television and radio emissions in easy finish and they have some uh, in-house guidelines, how they're producing them, um, apart from the usual and the standard uh, guidelines or recommendations of speaking slower, they have a really uh, great idea of um, reiterating uh, the main idea of the uh, of the emission of or the show or the news piece. Um, which works well in the audiovisual format, 
And I'm talking about audiovisual format because with broadcasters, um, the audio part is always tightly connected with the visual part. Um, and we always have to take into consideration both. So when thinking about the video, the visual part, we also have to think about how the audio will uh, hear or look. Um, so this is quite important. Um, then the next example is ORF. It's the Austrian uh, national broadcaster. It's uh, They're producing since, I think, 2020. They're producing Nachrichten in Einfacher Sprache. This is news in plain language. Um, they have chosen plain language um, as they have written because they're not the rules are not so strict. Uh, but in a sense, they are also trying to speak a bit slower, um, making the content more understandable. Um, and when you will have maybe time later, uh, you can check them because it's really interesting. Even though you don't understand the language, you will be able to hear the paralinguistic features quite well. You will be able to uh, hear how, uh, for example, uh, people doing the news in Finnish uh, easy language or uh, German easy language in Austria are trying to uh, do the same thing. So this uh, similar pauses, similar speed and so on. Um, then next example, which is not audio visual, but uh, it concerns only the audio, the radio, um, and also our partners in the Silsi project, uh, the Vieglas Valodas Agentura had uh, quite an important part of uh, here. Mm, so I think this started in 2016. And for example, if you'll be listening to news in easy language, uh, language in, in Latvian, in easy Latvian, you will see that the paralinguistic features differ uh, among different speakers. Some of them speak faster. Some have, uh, for example, uh, specific uh, uh, speech patterns. So, uh, struct uh, so um, specific paralinguistic, uh, for example, the speed of the speech and so on. So it's really interesting to see um the differences among for example news in latvian in easy latvian um for example listening on tuesday or on thursday for example so this is quite interesting um and then we have also uh news in easy swedish on swedish national broadcaster uh, which started also, I think, in 2016. Um, they are, they are um, how to say, they have a special... Um, I'm talking mainly when going through these examples about who are, what are their differences, how do they differ from each other somehow. And when talking to uh, people who are uh, doing this news in easy Swedish, um, I understood that at the beginning they were mostly uh, had a special target groups, uh, which were people who couldn't speak uh, Swedish yet, meaning people who were learning Swedish. So that's why maybe from the linguistic features or ling linguistic specificities, uh, it maybe differs from others. Um, so this is quite interesting also in regards to what um, Lea Laura said that we all, I mean, countries have different um, ideas about uh, so-called target groups. So this is also uh, one thing that we have to have in mind when producing this kind of content. Uh, and then I think this is the last example is uh, Mitteldeutscher Rundfunk. This is one of the German public television stations. So this is one of the regional ones. And they're producing uh, news in written easy German uh, for the last few years. 
but they have uh, started producing also audio podcasts since December 2021, um, which is interesting. Um, and I think it works quite well uh, because at RTV Slovenia, so in at our um, organization, we are also producing news in easy language. Um, and we are also providing audio for people who want to hear it, but we are using speech synthesis. So speech synthesis, on the other hand, for the first, of course, from being um, <clears throat> voiced out by a certain voice talent, uh, at the same time, it has some uh, advantages which are more on the organizational the, the logistics side and it has some disadvantages which are uh, for example uh, the problems with enunciation and so on but for example at rtv slovenia we we decided with with testing and with validation um, that the proper speed for this kind of talks is around 80 percent of the standard speed uh, that people who are listening to this kind of, uh, let's say, podcasts or speech synthesis uh, understand it well. Um, so this was quite kind of a quick review of what's going on in Europe. There are many more, uh, many other organizations working um, on news in easy language. They are producing good content. Um, so this was just kind of a medley of different uh, examples. Um, and since this multiplier event is uh, concerned mainly, or at the beginning it was concerned with the questioner and the results that the questioner gave, um, and as you uh, were able to hear um, the, the partners, presented the results of the um, specifically for specific particular uh, countries, I will try to present uh, uh, a bit differently. I will try to present, I think it's, you can hardly see it on the presentation, but um, my idea was to present the results for um, respondents who are um, professionals uh, producing oral content. If, for example, broadcasters, media producers, voice talents, audio narrators, or journalists. Um, and among 265 professionals, only 13 um, responded. This is five less than 5% responded as professionals producing oral content, which means there is um, not a lot of people producing this, um, which is also uh, in relation to, to the facts that not many organizations are producing this kind of um, content. So um, this is why I wanted to present at the beginning, what are the examples and to show you that there are not many uh, organizations in sense, or there is not much, um, how should I say that? A lot is being done in this field, but, um, it's still at the beginning of 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 what's being uh, produced. So um, then the next results I wanted to show is where the respondents were from. So what countries are they from? So we have Spain, Italy, Latvia, Slovenia, Lithuania, and Finland. Um, as you can see, there are four people who responded from Latvia, uh, three from Italy, two from Spain, one from Finland, one from Lithuania, and two from Slovenia. This means that these are a few of the countries we also mentioned. So Latvia, Slovenia, Finland, uh, for the other ones, we are not sure what uh, are they actually doing in this sense, but it's a good sign that also the countries which, for example, I don't know of, or we don't know of that they're producing some kind of uh, audiovisual content or just audio content in spoken easy language, uh, they're doing something. Uh, in this regards. Um, then one of the interesting things that I wanted to show you is what guidelines they use. And as you can see uh, from the 13 
uh, respondents who responded as producers of oral content, nine use um, some kind of guidelines and four don't use any. We have two which use inclusion Europe and EFLA guidelines. Then we have four uh, who use in-house guidelines, two that use national guidelines and one which uses special guidelines for radio emissions in easy language. Um, and this is coming from Latvia. So this is, I think it's quite encouraging to see that the guidelines are being used, that people are producing their content according to some kind of guidelines. Um, one of the things that uh, is also really interesting um, from the questionnaire is that most of the um, answers, uh, which were free form answers, uh, are discussing uh, the linguistic features. So they're discussing how they're linguistically, um, what kind of linguistic features they're using in their audiovisual content, meaning that there, it is important that firstly, uh, you know how to use easy language, uh, maybe in, in some kind of a written form, and then try to um, modify it and use it in audio or audiovisual uh, environments. Uh, so these are just a few examples. Develop simple sentences and find the right vocabulary. Um, use simpler vocabulary, simpler sentences. Then there is one support with simple images or presentations. Um, how to structure content and how to structure sentences. Uh, how to make the correct accents in the spoken word and silences or rests in the texts, um, which also brings me to one interesting um, comment. Um, previous speakers were talking how important it is for uh, end users to, um, uh, if people speak to them in, for example, dialects, but the problem with dialects and uh, national broadcasters is that uh, we are um, we don't we need to use some kind of a standard language because uh, we cannot use dialects in our content, which makes it a bit more difficult uh, for us to produce uh, content which is uh, specifically designed or specifically done for for those who. Um, who, for example, uh, hear or watch it. In this sense, uh, the validation is also um, a bit different process than it usually is. So the, the target groups, the validation and so on happens uh, in a bit different uh, situations and in, in, in a different uh, modes. Mm. So I think this is quite... Um, uh, quite hard to distinguish now, but these are paralinguistic and non-linguistic features uh, which were uh, which the respondents talked about in the questionnaire. Um, I only need two minutes more. So, um, as I said, the paralinguistic and non-linguistic features are though are the features that interest me the most because as a representative of a broadcaster these are the things that um, are really important for us as a producers for us that are doing this kind of content um, and it's interesting for example um, how many people um, answered that they never uh, use music or sound effects to make content easier, which from my perspective or the perspective of a broadcaster makes total sense because um, using music or effects somehow uh, makes it harder for speech to come into the um, into the first plane in sense that it is not that understandable if you have music behind the speech or some kind of a sound effects that are enriching the um the 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 speech so um, this is one of the interesting finds and then we have also sometimes they use louder voice to emphasize important words 
which also makes sense. And then they often use clear articulation for difficult words, and I you and they use long pauses between words and between sentences. They talk more slowly than usually, um, which is a, uh, I think, uh, from kind of a, a broadcaster's perspective. Um, it makes sense even in more uh, standard uh, content production, not only when producing content uh, in audiovisual. Uh, I mean, easy, easy, con easy to understand content in audiovisual uh, environments. Or uh, yeah, so that was it. That was a short uh, presentation about the examples from Europe. And on the other side, the um, presentation of the most, let's say, um, interesting parts of the questionnaire and the, and the responses that we got at the project. Um, thank you very much. Selfsy, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexi Verbundet, Universita degli Studi di Trieste, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vsi Informatio Scaupimo Irsklaidos Centras. Funded by the European Union.